In some areas of recording audio and music production, I'm pretty old school, and one of them is in that when working with another artist or writing my own music, I always believe that the best way to get the best recording is to keep redoing your take or your passage with the vocal or the instrument until you get it right, and don't record something half-baked with the idea that you can fix it using the tools in Studio One later, because those tools that you use to correct timing and pitch, issue, pitch issues are never going to be as good as just recording a really great take, even if you have to do it 10, 15 times. However, I understand that this is not always possible, and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can go about quantizing audio uh, that has timing issues. And here I've just got a couple of tracks here, some drums on the first, and then a bass part on the second here. And you can even see, if we zoom in a bit here, just by looking at the grid, this first note, for instance, is off. We can see that that's not even hitting on the downbeat. And this one here is kind of fitting with the rhythm and the vibe here, but this one here is a little bit off. So we have some timing issues in here that we're going to take a look at, several different ways that we can go about correcting this. So the first thing that I want to do is click once to select this, and then I'm going to come up to the menu bar here, and then let's click on this first icon, which is for the bend panel or audio bend. So I'll click once. And then I'm going to click on the Analyze while this audio event is selected. And then we're going to see that bend markers have been added to this. So Studio One is going to look for transients or kind of the initial loud spike of the audio and add the bend markers there. Now the next thing that I want to do is come up to this Action section here. And by default, this is going to be on Slice. And if we were to click on Apply, then it's going to slice at these bend markers. So if you ever want to slap, slice up drum loops, that's one that, way that you can do it. Just leave on Slice and click Apply. But we want to quantize this, so I'm going to click on the drop-down menu, select Quantize, and now just take note of our notes and bend markers. When I click Apply, these should move. Okay, so we do have some movement there. Now we can see that this did not move that forward, but let's just give a listen and see what it's done, or hear what it's done. Okay, so actually that works. Uh, if we were not happy about the position that these bin markers have moved to, and just keep in mind that they're going to move to the location that we have set in the quantize value. So that was eighth notes. So all of these bin markers were moved to the nearest eighth note when we clicked on apply. And you're going to want to choose the quantize value for your quantization of audio based on how bad the playing is. The worse the playing is, the more the notes need to be moved. So if you did a pretty decent job and you just need to move a little bit, something like 16th note here could work for you. But in our situation, the eighth note worked good. But this first part could, this first note could potentially be on beat one. It does work where it is, but if we would like to move it, let me press 7 on the QWERTY keyboard. That's going to switch us to the bend tool. We could also click up here. And let's just hover on this bend marker. And we'll notice that that pencil is going to change. Let's left click hold and drag this to that beat 1. Let's hear how this sounds. Okay, so that actually didn't sound that great here. Okay, so we'll control Z and put that back to where it was. Okay, so you get the idea here. This is kind of the automated method to do this, but we're going to control Z and undo all of that. And let's take a look at another method. And with this, we're going to manually add the bend markers wherever we would like to add them. So first, we're going to right click on our audio event and let's click the checkbox for bend marker so we can actually see the bend markers when we're adding them. And again, my bend tool is still active and my snap is turned off. Snap is going to affect 
where you're able to place this. So if I turn the snap on, then you can see we're snapping to that eighth note quantized value that's set there. Okay, but I want to be a bit more precise, so I'll turn the snap off. Let's add a bend marker there, here, 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 and here. Okay, so now that I've added these bend markers, I'm going to hover and just manually adjust these. And I'm going to put that back to where the automatic quantize set that to, because I, I do like where that sounds there. And let's just experiment with moving some of these other ones to a different position. Now, you'll notice that these are changing colors, and basically anything that's green is being compressed or shortened. Anything that's red is being lengthened. And the deeper the shade, the more it's being stretched. So as I continue to move this, that red gets a bit darker and I kind of lost my position here but that's okay we'll just experiment and I'm gonna move this one just a touch and let's actually pull this one forward and see how this sounds let's try this one forward Okay, that last one sounds pretty bad, so I'm going to click once to add a bend marker here and pull this one in. Okay, so as you can hear with this method, when we manually add the bend markers and move with our, uh, ourself, and just note I had the snap turned off right now. If that was engaged, then we would be snapping to the eighth note subdivisions here when we make these adjustments. But as you notice, this is a different feel than the automatic version that we did just a second ago, so you can always experiment and come up with a different feel when you're making these adjustments also. Now let's look at one last method, so we're going to undo all of this. So for this last method, I'm going to right click on our audio event, and then I'm going to come to audio and under the audio bend, we can detect transients. Okay. So now those have been added kind of similar to using analyze our bend tool is still active. So then I can come in at these points and make the adjustments as we've already seen. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is that we can use shortcuts to apply some of these actions. So I'm going to, Shift and F to come out of full screen. Let's come up to Studio One and Keyboard Shortcuts. And then I'm going to type in Detect. And then we can see that we have Detect Transients here. So if I click on this, we can click in the Enter Key field and put a key in, apply that, so that then whenever we have an audio event selected, we can just press that single key and the transients will be detected. And I'm also pretty sure that we can set up a shortcut for snapping the bend markers to a specific value. So you could actually set up a macro that detects the transients and then snaps them to a particular quantized value. Anyhow, this is how we can go about detecting the transients in our audio to go about quantizing them automatically or manually ourselves. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training for Studio One, I do provide that over Zoom. So if you'd like to speed up your learning curve, if you're having technical issues with Studio One, definitely check out the information in the pinned comment below or the description of this video for more information on training with me directly over Zoom in Studio One. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next tutorial.